Actually, we do have Rajesh joining in now, so let's uh, carry that conversation forward. Rajesh Kothari, Managing Director at Alf Accurate Advisors. Rajesh, good afternoon. Good to have you in the conversation. So, you know, we were having a, a larger perspective conversation with Mr. Vijay Kedia. I want to dial back to a little more of the here and now and this predicament that the market seems to be in. You know, today we were just 6.7 points shy of this all-time high level uh, and then selling has set in. But I want to talk to you about the financial space in a little more detail, Rajesh, because for, for whatever reason, there has been consistent selling in banks. Uh, they are underperforming the Nifty as well. Do you think this is just some tactical move, some shifts playing out? Or is this uh, perhaps something, something bigger that's building up? Maybe something to do with margins and the outlook uh, going forward. Your sense on financials? So, you know, so, so, uh, you know thanks for having me. Um, I think uh, when you look at the overall financials, it is to be broadly classified into two categories, banks and NBFCs. Now, what has happened is that in last entire year, the banking sector, I'm talking about the bank side of the banking sector, they benefited the most because the interest rates were going up. And when interest rates are now likely to be kind of a picked out or it may take a long pause and then again it may start cooling down, definitely the net interest margins, which went up significantly, definitely it will cool down to some extent. Of course, it varies from uh, a bank to a bank. But very importantly, the non-food credit growth, that still remains very, very strong. But the net interest margins of the banking, uh, you know, pure banks I'm talking about, that may come under a little bit of pressure. However, the NBFC side of it, which were adversely impacted last year, they will now benefit going forward over the next 12 to 18 months as the interest rates have not picked out. And for them, the margins actually will expand for NBFC sector. So I think there might be, uh, you know, some switch uh, on a, what I would say, on incremental basis, one might be doing it. But overall, as a theme, uh, we still are overall positive on banking and finance on both uh, banks as well as an NBFC. Of course, one needs to be selective in buying the stocks. All right, you've spoken about banks and NBFCs. What about the insurance space? I mean, BFSI as a whole, because uh, over the last two trading sessions, you know, life insurance in particular has got a strong tailwind behind it. In fact, just look at uh, the intraday chart of HDFC Life, a big surge from lows currently at the high point of trade. Uh, giving it company again at the highs of trade is SBI Life and uh, ICICI Pro Life. Uh, all these life insurance stocks have been doing well. Your thoughts on the insurance space? Well, currently we do not own any uh, insurance directly. You know, we own it through, of course, the banks who hold these insurance companies. But I think, uh, you know, what is important is that if you have a two, three years view, then banking sector in general provides enough opportunity, the enough growth compared to playing, I think, the micro segments where then again you take the risk from the government side in terms of any change in regulations, be it the taxation or something else. So I think it is always better to play directly through the banks rather than through the sub-segments like insurance. At least that's what, what we do at our portfolio. Okay, big move once again in HDFC Live. Look at it now, 5, 5.5% on uh, Friday and it's uh, the top winner on the Nifty now. What a turnaround after the blowback that we had uh, at the end of budget 2023. This has just been absolutely spectacular. Uh, Rajesh, what's the house call on uh, technology now? Well, this is a space where we went underweight uh, exactly about, uh, you know, 15 months back in March 2022, where we reduced the most of the, you know, weightage on IT sector. And uh, from there, of course, uh, you know, uh, uh, by and large, that theme went right, that trend went right. From here on, we are incrementally monitoring the space. Uh, stock prices have corrected, which is a good thing. But the valuations are still not that attractive because the growth is also impacted significantly because of the U.S. slowdown. Uh, so, you know, I think some cherry picking, that's what, what you started in this sector, but very, very selectively rather than taking the broader view on the sector. So as a sector, we are still underweight, but we have started doing some cherry picking within the IT space. Well, Rajesh, you know, everyone speaks about the old economy, the manufacturing space and all of that likely to do well in India because of PLIs. Your thoughts on uh, what are the interesting pockets out there? And I ask this specifically because the electronic manufacturing sector has, uh, you know, done extremely well. And EQ Lighting, the stock that listed just last Friday, has rallied. I mean, after a 50% move on day one, is up another 10% today. So your thoughts on manufacturing and electronic manufacturing? Well, I think if you remember, probably we are one of the first one who said that we are very bullish on capital goods as a theme uh, two years back, driven by various factors. And PLI 
the make in India, the government efforts was also part of the reasons why we became a very bullish on CapEx as a theme. So we continue to remain positive on CapEx. In fact, we hold almost 26, 27% of our AAA budding beast in capital goods. And we also own about, uh, you know, 12, 13, 14% of our uh, flagship plan, AAA India Opportunity PMS for the capital goods. So we are, you know, reasonably bullish on this space. Uh, and of course, we are equally bullish on this EMS space. I think the opportunity is huge. These companies are actually too small. Whichever companies we talk about, we own a couple of names in this space in our uh, triple budding list. But I think the opportunity is big and uh, there are no sizable companies in this. So I think many companies will come out of the IPO over next probably 12, 18 months. They all are like, you know, 100, 200, 300 crores kind of a profit making companies. But I think they have a long runway ahead to become three, four, five times in terms of the profit size, uh, you know, over the next three, four, five years. Provided, very importantly, I just wanted to highlight you, is that the please always make sure that, uh, you know, from viewer's perspective, that when you pick the stock, the working capital cycle is very, very important. So there are many companies in this space which are showing high margins, but their working capital cycles are not so efficient. Uh, and compared to that, we prefer the businesses uh, which have might be a little bit less margins, but their ROC, return on capital employed, is very strong and their cash flow cycle, the cash conversion cycle is highly efficient. So we always prefer those businesses compared to the other side of it. You might see growth uh, in both, in terms of revenue growth and profit growth, but in one basket, you may not see the efficient cash flows. And therefore, over a period of time, it may not create the huge wealth in the longer term. Sure, thank you so much for joining in and uh, you know giving us your views on a bunch of sectors and uh, advice on uh, what one should do. Let's move on and talk about what's happening in